is a show that focuses on the person behind the brony. I'm your host, Osaka Jack. Please sit back and relax as we talk to this week's guest brony. Hello, everyone. This is Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight on Everfree Network. With me today, I have someone who's work you may have been in contact with, but possibly not the man himself. Stand by, please. And that's not a request. That's actually the name. Hello. Hey, Jack. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm great. Hmm. Yeah, stand by, please. Most people know me on Twitter through mm-hmm. that, so <laughs> that's my name. Don't wear it out. I would love to meet somebody whose name has just been worn out. Just, hey, what's your name? <sighs> Karen. And they just can never complete it with any energy anymore. It's been worn out. Yeah. Yours is one of the more uh, punny names that I've come across. Though. Oh, yes. And I'm sure you've heard and told every single joke possible with it. Or people have told me the jokes. Right. Yes, it does does lend itself to uh, to joke status. Mm-hmm. Especially to, you know, using radios or just talking to people. Stand by. Yeah. All right, stand by, please. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it never gets old. Please, stand by. I was thinking musical version. Just possibly introduce you with a snapping and doom, doom, do, 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 do. No? Okay. <laughs> Tell me somebody's stand, done, somebody else has done that. Stand by, please. No, late on the delivery. Say again? Tell me somebody else has done that joke to you. I can't the musical, the, first. Uh, the musical one, yeah. I don't think you know. You're the first one. Oh, I'm a trailblazer. Okay, yeah, everybody has to introduce themselves with snapping and chorus to you now. We'll get the doo-wop guys out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Doo-wop would be an awesome name for an OC pony. Just saying it right now. Osaka Jack coined it. Woohoo! Yay! Trademarks. Well, if anybody isn't familiar with you or your work, could you describe a little bit of what do you do? Well, I personally am what uh, involved in what you would call post-production. Mm-hmm. Um, it's what we do after people shoot uh, video or film. Mm-hmm. We do things like edit it, manipulate it, uh, special effects, mm-hmm. uh, posting it places, but... Uh, um, yeah, I'm a post-production consultant, although I do dabble in production, studio work, camera, mm-hmm. things like that. Sure. And uh, I supervise a team of editors who make all kinds of interesting things, mm-hmm. make sure they're happy and uh, not stabby-stabby or right. mutinous. Mm-hmm. It's hard. Keep those underlings under control. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have, has there been any of your work that you're allowed to talk about or just mention it? or? Well, um, <clears throat> I uh, I did work on a, uh, a little independent film many years ago um, that uh, actually won, uh, I believe it was Best Independent Feature, a Canadian, uh, Canadian Independent Film uh, Awards. Okay. So long ago, I'm trying to remember, but uh, <laughs> it was a low-budget feature called The Overlookers, and uh, I think you can probably find it on Netflix. Okay. But uh, yeah, that was a trip. Huh. Um, what else? A lot of corporate stuff, mm-hmm. a lot of things that just kind of blend in and sure. no one ever remembers, and you know, personal stuff. Hmm. I know that um, it's probably not one of your big titles, but... One of the ones that sticks out to me is, um, what the heck was that? Or, that's what I've named it. It was a vine, which featured an empty field, and then a droned derpy zoomed by the camera. Uh, Yes. I'm also known as a crazy drone pilot. Oh, yes. I'll clarify. Yeah, yes, there is a vine video that uh, does exist. Um... Our friend uh, Joy, uh, who goes by Joy the Artist on Twitter and Tumblr and Etsy. Go buy her stuff. It's awesome. <laughs> um, she she had designed a special uh, derpy plushie because I'm a big fan of derpy. Um, and I don't try to collect a lot of merchandise. Sure. But when I do, 
I collect derpy. <laughs> so, uh, she was sewing a lot of custom designs for people as well as, uh, uh, putting things up for sale. And, uh, unbeknownst to me, she had been working on a, uh, secret project, a, a, uh, studio assistant derpy. Um, so she made, she made a derpy plushie custom with uh, special rag fabric. I don't know where she finds those things because it's perfect. But um, and then she constructed a little pair of uh, headphones to go with it, and she had the derpy was all tangled up in the cords, and it was it was uh, brilliant. If I remember correctly, part of the cords went through her mouth. So yes, she she's holding on to it. Like here, I got it for you, <laughs> which was great. Uh, I I loved it a lot. I actually, um, I made a a little unboxing video for her, <laughs> um, which she loved, so that it was she could see. My joy, uh, firsthand. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but getting to the point, uh, I was with a friend up upstate. We have a uh, uh, a place upstate New York um, mm-hmm. with a big field, and uh, I have a drone. So I decided to uh, see if it would lift said plushy derpy. <laughs> Attach some fishing wire and uh, scheming, making a. Uh, I was a big viner at that point. I haven't vined in a while, but I should get back on it. And we filmed. This our, the friend, by the way, was uh, yours and mine, uh, John Fulner. Ah, okay. Uh, who many people know. Uh, he had been upstate with me, and we, we schemed. <laughs> and we wanted to see if this would work. Right. So he had the camera, and uh, we, uh, we, we made a flying derpy. And we made a video <laughs> of it. Like a UFO, derpy just flies across the screen and it was real not special effects <laughs> so that was that was that was pretty popular and uh, mm-hmm. uh that was a lot of fun and yes i i do a lot of other stuff with the drone mm-hmm. uh putting together a little aerial uh, reel as well <laughs> um and that's that's a blast to fly so mm. little hobbies to keep them busy yeah i'm curious as to your opinion on amazon's new move um, I was uh, impressed. Um, it made me take pause, but at the same time, uh, what is it, Jeff Bezos? I wouldn't put it past him. It's going to be interesting to see how far he gets. I think in his timetable of five years, right? Um, because there are regulations that are coming. I think initially at 2015, mm-hmm. um, because a lot of people get these things and they. Uh, you can fly them for personal use, but you're really not supposed to, according to the FAA, right. fly them, uh, you know, for commercial profit, sure. because then they become an actual aircraft, and there's commerce, and they, you know, uh, they're sense. not happy with that. So sure. they they want to they want to regulate, and there's a whole there's a whole lot of barriers that they have to break through. Sure. Um, that it's going to be interesting to see what they do and how far they get. But I think it's cool. The order the sky's gonna be filled idea. with them. Yeah, I'm I'm curious as to how it would interfere with an area that has, say, an airport or wildlife that have a lot you know, a lot of birds. But Yeah, I mean, uh I think there's the FAA has made testing grounds, um little labs across the country mm-hmm. for people who are developing stuff to do tests and i think they want to be able to put for autonomous things i think they want to be able to certify and put them through like a bunch of uh sure tests so that they know how to avoid things and you know not go and like crash into somebody's hair or something like that (laughs) well another point that somebody brought up that i thought was hilarious was uh so in the country that has more guns per capita than anywhere else we want to send a bunch of flying targets yeah, yeah. There's actually I forget where it is, but there's a there's a rural town that actually puts bounties, uh, hunting hunting bounties out for drones that fly over. Really? And you bring them into like the little town center, and uh, they give you a uh, like a reward. <laughs> what? So what is the uh, logic? I, Don't look at us. Yeah, well, you know, privacy is something we take for granted, but also you know, as each generation grows. You know, we're used to less and less of it. That's so, true. but there's definitely some people. I mean, I like privacy. Oh yeah. Privacy. I try to be a responsible droner, but uh, there are people that you know, just real knuckleheads. Yeah. That just don't, you know, 
shouldn't should get their wings, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Though so. I can see um, in some parts of uh, Southeast Asia, uh, kite flying is actually a sport where you can attach like blades or little things to parts of the kite and you try to get the kites to crash into each other and knock the other one out of the air. I'm just That's waiting cool. for drone combat. Um, I think I've seen some people do it. I think there are people that actually, there are videos out there. Yeah. That they will make these drones and it's like, uh, what was that TV show? Battle bots or something. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. And, uh, that was always a blast to watch. So I'm like, Mm. you know, you take it to the air and you have these things. It's kind of scary actually on one side because, Mm -hmm. you know, they make these flying death machines, (laughs) uh, which are normally in an arena. Yeah. But, um, you know, that they could go and take out and fly over and, you know, <laughs> go attack and destroy things. But, yeah, yeah. carnage, uh, drone carnage. Love it. I, I think it definitely has potential as a sport. I would like to see it be made into a sport just so people who do it have to be in a stadium or a field that's designated for it instead of, you know, over someone else's house. Yeah, well, there's there's people. I mean, there's uh, that do model airplane flying. I mean, serious RC enthusiasts, and they go to actual designated parks and places to do their stunt flying, and are like, you know, super serious hobbyists. Oh yeah. yeah. So you know the drone, you know, the drones have gotten cheap enough. People just go out and buy them and go fly them around, and there's mm-hmm. not, you know, they they get they draw the ire from a lot of these other groups that are like, you know, you you knuckleheads you people <laughs> ruin you know you're going to ruin it for everybody mm-hmm. so and it's true but they're you know responsible flying they're very cool um, sure. not to drag on about it but it's, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, it's cool why not responsible drone flying is very cool and they're getting more and more affordable mm-hmm. for private use every day you just hook a gopro up to it you get a little stabilizer mm-hmm. you're out making beautiful footage that you know Two thousand dollar an hour helicopters were, you know, the only things that we're able to get yeah. previously. So we've come a long way. Indeed. And I, oh, how long before we have a smartphone app? Fly my drone. They have them. No fool. A... Wow. I got to stop making jokes because they turn out to be true. <laughs> well, you ask the questions, I answer. Yeah, um, yeah. They have drones now that, well, there's the Parrot. A lot of people will know the Parrot AR drone um, was one of the first ones that they came out with uh, that has a little built-in camera, and you fly it over Wi-Fi with oh. uh, an app. And actually, to go back to your point about using them in, like, you know, battles, yeah. Um, it's supposed to be like augmented reality, so you can, uh, if you just want to fly around, you can take videos or do other things, but you can also play this sort of like a laser tag type thing, so it's like you're playing a video game on your iPhone or iPad or Android, mm-hmm. um, and you and your buddies are flying around chasing each other. Uh, you can, uh, and I'm making a little bunny ears, wink, wink, uh, you can shoot each other with missiles and lasers and register hits and points and actually turn it into a game. Wow. Uh, future is here and we've all got to grow wings or be left behind. It's all part of Skynet's plan. Yeah. Yeah. I think the most unrealistic part of the entire uh, Terminator series was when people were unwilling to give their lives over to Skynet. Yeah. Cause everybody's like, dude, hook me up. Like upload my friends list, man. Yeah, really? <laughs> what? Skynet's got free Wi-Fi everywhere? Heck yeah. Oh, no dude. problem, man. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I can see a bunch of Tumblr posts coming out. Well, the Terminators only act if you're in their area, so obviously get out of their way. Well, I know that you have been uh, to quite a few cons. Um, or actually, how many have you been to? I know of one, because that's the only one that I've gone to. Yeah, there's. I was kind of trying to put a little list together, and I'm no. I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff. But sure. the first one, the first one I went to was the big BronyCon uh, um, convention out in Secaucus. Okay. What was that? Was that that was a year, two years ago now? 2012, I believe. She was. <laughs> well, it, it would be a year and a half, I guess, because you know, yeah, time. But uh, um, yeah, it was BronyCon. Then it was. Uh, 
um, Everfree Northwest, mm-hmm. uh, EQLA, Kenderlock Gardens, Cloudsdale Congress, um, Las Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a hoot. Um, yeah. <laughs> and there may be there may be others, uh, but what turned into I mean I wasn't really a major majorly into the con scene. Sure. Until, um, you know, I would spend some time online. I'd come home and uh, there was a um, uh, an environment, a web environment called uh, SyncTube, a service that okay. uh, you could go to. And uh, remember, yeah, it's defunct now. Although I think they're rebuilding it, but uh, people have taken up the the reins. But because uh, it was great, it you'd was go great. in, you'd I, have these channels, and you could you you could all watch YouTube channels together with a chat window, and it was yeah. you know buggy and uh you know didn't always work but it it there was a community yeah. so think of it as like i'm you know you're like a bar fly right so you come in mm-hmm. you have the regulars you're talking to them Norm! You've got, yeah and there's there's so that was what i i must have found it somehow through um there was uh ponaburu which okay. was uh because i started seeing on the I'm preemptively basically giving you the brony genesis now. I'd be like, how did you become a brony? <laughs> I'm just going to cut to the chase. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I had started to see a lot of, I can't remember when it was. I think it was, um, when did they start? It was 2010, right? End of 2010? Yeah, 10, 10, 10 is when they started. So I think it was, it had been going for a little while. It was a couple episodes in the next, next year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I can't remember exactly when, but, uh, I had started to see all these like pop references and artwork and things like that just popping up in regular, you know, internet stuff. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I remember My Little Pony from back when it was, you know, uh, the uh, older generation the stuff. Times. We sort of grew up with it. My dad, um, who was also an editor, worked on a lot of Hasbro stuff. So, you know, we were all, it was in our veins. He, right. He actually worked on the commercials for uh, G.I. Joe, Transformers, My Little Pony, all the Hasbro stuff. So it was kind of in the blood. But I was like, holy crap, they're rebooting it? (laughs) So I was curious. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another, um, which is dangerous on the Internet. Yeah. Uh, No. Uh, One thing led to another. And so I found uh, Pona Brew. I was like, wow, this is this style is very cool. And uh, the thing was, too, I'm a sarcastic guy. I enjoy sarcasm. I like memes. Uh, to a point, unless they start overdoing it, like become <laughs> mainstream or whatever. Uh, but I like funny things, smart, Stand witty. By hipster. Yeah. And Sh- things that, you know, don't quite match the, uh, you know, intended audience. Like, sure. you know, uh, little ponies doing things they're not supposed to and, and uh, you know, adult humor. Not adult humor. Don't get your dirty <laughs> mind out of uh, No. But I mean, just like it's funny because you know you've got this this you know sweet cartoon and then people make them do you know funny yeah you know it's older humor, that's humor. Not only for kids and you know if we know anything about people on the internet uh they can take sarcasm to the next level and make some really funny stuff so yes uh so i saw a lot of that and i was like wow this is you know the uh these people are it's pretty funny so um i followed Pona Brew and I think I found a link to SyncTube and uh, what I found there was there was a lot of uh, a lot of culture that was condensed in there. You've got uh, you know music videos, PMVs that people have, have edited together yeah. so you've got the, when the music scene started breaking out, you've got uh, what they call YouTube poops which is again the sarcasm and, and stupid things that a lot of people don't <laughs> like them but I, I some well done ones I kind of think are very funny. Um, especially when you're punchy and it's late at night. Yeah. But uh, again, these are make you know, it's like taking the, these ponies and re-editing them to say things that they're not supposed to say. And, sure, sure. you know, so I said, wow, these people have a sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> this is fun. Mm. One of the so, first things that I remember, actually, I have no idea why I watched it, but it was a uh, Sonic Rain Boom scene and they had edited the audio to uh, change to Guile's theme as soon as she hits the rainbow. Mm-hmm. So it's do 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 Sonic boom do 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 do. <laughs> yeah. So you're and then on top of that there was you know see so they cycle through that stuff you'd get that you'd get the music you'd get uh, episodes 
people would be, you know, talking about it. And that was sort of, again, it was like the cheers Mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, the pony fandom. And so that sort of got me hooked because it was community. And, uh, I was amazed at what, as an editor, Mm uh, you know, the creativity that, that was out there. And then I actually, you know, I saw an actual episode (laughs) and, uh, I think it was maybe, I'm not sure if it was the first one. I think I may have actually seen, um, is the episode, was it called? It was, it's called winter wrap up. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It was another episode. This is how far (laughs) it's old news. Um, but when the song came on, I was just blown away. Yeah. <laughs> because I was like, you know, these, this cartoon had such an orchestrated and well done, uh, um, catchy song put together. Yeah. That, you know, you get little goosebumps. So. Well, I think that's it right there is you got the word on it. They had a yeah. song in the middle of the episode. It wasn't a little ditty that they were singing or it wasn't like some, uh, it wasn't just a jingle that they had extended. It was right. a song. And it was a big, it was a big, well done, uh, high production value song. And, uh, it was, you know, it worked really well. That was the thing is the show was production value for it was very good. Yeah. The animation was good. I mean, you've got people that were coming from, you know, a lot of the big Titans in the animation industry, but the showrunner at the time was, you know, Powerpuff Girls and uh, my favorite, uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Right. And I really like the art direction and design and the animation style for that, too. So, mm-hmm. you know, it just I was like, this is this is a good mix and it's not trying to sell toys and it's not it's, you know, designed for kids and girls. But I was like, I was enjoying it. You know, like a little guilty pleasure. And then you look around and see if anybody's like, you know, watching you. What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Don't come in. Um, I think so, it's somewhat like um, I've I've kind of thought of it like uh, back in the day when I had a car and drove places. Darn you, Japan for having it. Okay, <laughs> love public transportation, but I miss driving and singing. But when you would be driving and a song comes on, you love the song and you just start singing it, and then you stop at a stoplight and glance over, and the person in the next car is singing the exact same song because it's on the radio. And you yeah, like make eye contact for just a second. And both of you are like, um, screw it. Yeah. Sing along, man. And you both are just like belting it out at the light and everybody's yeah. kind of looking at you, but you don't care. Right. Now, for a second, you're embarrassed that somebody else caught you, but then you're like, eh, we both like the song. It's a good song. We're singing it. Yeah. Get down with your bad self. Yeah. Those kind of moments of clarity are, are awesome when, when you're sharing a moment with somebody. I didn't mean to go off on a tangent about, but that that well, was I where I eighty five percent tangents. Yeah. Well, we're gonna go over here for a while, uh, and dig ourselves out and feel like. Honestly, it. if we had to confine ourselves to just cosine and sine, we would have almost no show. <laughs> Very fun. Hey, I can do humor. Woohoo! Trigonometry humor. Well, um, just to bring it back back sure. to the to the point of the question mm-hmm. was. I made the I I decided to make the jump. Um, you know, I sort of pretty much hung out on typical social media. I got a Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, uh, you know, and there was regulars that you you met. Um, and one of them actually was uh, Fulner again. Right. Uh, he was in Sync Two for a while too, and I was impressed by his character. Right. So mm-hmm. I had found out. I was like, oh, you know, he's local, and uh, he said, hey, we're having a convention. Uh, I missed the first one that was in the city, right. um, the, the the original BronyCon, and then uh, um, they were they were having another one that was in you know Secaucus, which was like I could throw a stone at it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, you know, I'm still curious about you know how the convention is, and you know these these Bronies, like um, I want to check it out and actually you know venture outside the you know the shell and go see what they're doing. <laughs> and so I um and I said and I'm gonna go meet John Fulner <laughs> and uh, shake his hand because he's really impressed me his you know <laughs> attitude and his uh you know his outlook and right it's hard to find people like that you know 
Yeah. So I said, I'm going to go and make a trip of it. So signed up, went down, explored the convention, and that was sort of a um, that was a catalyst moment for me because everything just really congealed. Mm-hmm. It was a great. Everybody was having a great time. Everybody yeah. was like, you know, feeling emotional about how how uh, you know unusual but very cool this was. Right. It was like you know the 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 became sort of the mecca, and made a lot of you know life friends there, and uh, that sort of kicked off. It was you know when it wrapped, I was like, what's the next thing? When's the next <laughs> one? Where are we going? <laughs> and the rest is is history. Now it's sort of turned into you know breaks from work and and vacation trips and seeing mm-hmm. seeing awesome friends. Nice. And uh, so it's a great experience. Now I, I'm sorry that I don't know the answer to this, but have you been involved involved in any of the cons beyond just attendance? I mean, have you are in, you in the uh, post production of any of the con work? Well. Um, Basically, I'm one of these people that sort of ventures into things and um, are at the right place at the right time. Okay. You know, I've done live event stuff before, um, especially on the production side. I keep a cool head. Um, and, you know, just working with, with Fulner, who at the time was, you know, he was the head of VIP uh, relations, right? VIP relations or Viper. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, you know, sort of by sticking with him, uh, you know, things come up and, you know, they find good people and you sort of make yourself useful because, yeah. you know, you sort of do the circuit and you're like, okay, how can I help? Or, mm-hmm. you know, what's up? Yeah. And, uh, so things happen and you sort of help, help situations and people sure. remember and just make yourself useful. Yeah. And then, uh, so that's sort of been happening, you know, I'm like, it's like, I think I've said I'm like Vash the Stampede, where you just kind of like roll in, like save a situation, and then just kind of like disappear, and people are like, who was that? <laughs> you just happen to be in the right place or coming through the town, and they're like, help. So, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to do it. Who was that masked man with the drone? <laughs> my, nature is to, my nature is to, you know, help, or I'm in uh, draft, if he's listening to this, he's going he's gonna to laugh. Uh, add value. That's our that's our buzzword. It's supposed to it's like Pee Wee Herman. You're supposed to hear all the things go off. Everybody's like, ah, magic word. So, um, so that eventually progressed into a sort of an official, um, an official uh, uh, position uh, at actually in split split position at uh, last BronyCon. Okay. Um, where they they brought me on Viper as a uh, driver oh, uh, with my car. Right. Um, police Dodge Charger. Fulner, like, loves this thing. It's like, oh, you got to be my driver. you got to do it. <laughs> it's like, all right, man, let's do it. So I would transport people back and forth from the airport and just make it available. Because I used to make it available anyway. And just, you know, it's, it's come in handy. Mm-hmm. This just sort of made it official. Mm-hmm. Um. And it's and, about as uh, close as you can get to the Blues Brothers mobile, anyway. So yeah, right. We're gonna I'm gonna have the sunglasses, the the half a pack of cigarettes, and uh, some hats like in the trunk just in case. <laughs> broken um, cigarette lighter. Got to have a broken cigarette lighter. Right. Figures. <laughs> um, and uh, so while I was doing that, basically, uh, um, Everfree Network had also asked for some some help uh, in uh, streaming at that convention oh. so we we wanted to go big and right. so i sort of consulted with them and uh um planned some of the hardware and uh work with them behind stage and uh we had a system that let us do a lot of live switching and effects and streaming and all that stuff too which was great nice. that i actually have at our studio at work so we we uh did some hot training uh, by seat of the pants, and uh, it it actually worked out well, and uh, so we were able to use that. And I worked with them um, for uh, BronyCon during you know the concerts and some of the panels and things like that. So I was splitting my time running back and forth. It was pretty funny, <laughs> but uh, you know those guys are you know they they really are dedicated and uh, um, 
you know, work their butt off there. And it's always a pleasure to work with them. Nice. I'm On top of being great friends, too. With videos, when was the last time somebody legitimately used a star wipe? I can't remember, but uh, there's actually... I mean, I've got one. In 80s week for uh, every... I had star wipes for my entire show. But that was just being... Well, you have to. I mean, that's, you know... 80s week. Exactly. It's there's there's it's a um, you know it goes with that sort of thing. It puts you in that mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's actually a um, <clears throat> there's a funny Tumblr. Um, it's called uh, StarWipeMyAss.tumblr.com, <laughs> and it's a sarcastic uh, um, Tumblr that basically uh, makes fun of you know the editing and film industry and uh, you know just like the bitter bitter uh you know editors and the things that they go through and uh you know it makes fun of the fact that star wipes are you know really cheesy and yes there's there's some funny things on there they have a facebook and a tumblr so oh yay i I admit i don't consider it a guilty pleasure because there's nothing that i've done but the sites like clients from hell and this one i'll add to it and the new one with the uh new york concierges telling their stories (laughs) they're hilarious I love sure. hearing stories about terrible customers because I've worked in customer service and I've had them. Yeah. I and like hearing I, I like hearing like human stories about how oh, things, yeah. you know, interactions and stuff, especially I mean, you know, like in retail or in yeah. support or other stuff, because you know, you figure that you can't make this stuff up, like mm-hmm. um that that it's you you can't write better material and oh, it's yeah. real. And almost everybody that I've spoken to who has been in retail, everybody has stories, but most people believe that their customer, their terrible customer stories are rare. It's like, no, no, no. Everybody has people like these. Mm-hmm. It, it just happens. I mean, I, I worked in the supermarket and I had to physically restrain a man from opening every ice cream, ice cream container and tasting it to see which one he liked. <laughs> Did he, he ever find one that, that he liked? He was only going to buy the delicious ones. Wow. He was putting he can't them make back this stuff up. after opening them. You can't make this stuff up. Did he ever find one that he liked? No, because by that time the uh our security arrived and they had contacted the police and we you know we said, "Okay, you've tried four of these now. You're either going to pay for these four and take them home or you will be shoplifting." And he got wow. angry, but he did pay for the four and I don't think he came back to our store. Well, all's well that ends well. Yeah. And the other story that I tell that's, it's, I don't, I guess she thought it was normal, but it's very common for people in America. Japan, it it just blows their minds when I tell them this, but it's very common for people to get some snacks or a candy bar or something and eat it in the store and just bring the, you know, wrapper and, oh, I ate this while I was walking around. Right. Okay, fine. So while checking, uh, this woman said, oh, I ate this. Can you just ring it up? I said, sure. And I look up, she has half a stick of butter in her hand. She literally opened a stick of butter and ate half of it while shopping. <laughs> that's like that's like the joke where the people uh, uh, carry around the like and just start eating out of the tub of mayonnaise. Yes, except this actually happened. I saw her just take a bite of butter. Oh, like I said, you can't make stuff up. No, so I I appreciate that there is a star wipe my butt tumbler. <laughs> yeah, it does exist, and uh, it's very much in parody form. Yay! I've got something to read tonight. Woohoo! All right. But uh, yeah, respect respect our retail workers. They I do honestly their jobs believe, tirelessly for lo- little to no pay. I honestly believe that. Uh, Anybody who is going to start working in retail, read these stories. If you're going Some to be hiring them. somebody, read the clients from hell thing so you yeah. know what other people have done and you don't be as terrible to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Though I'm sure we could start another one for just terrible, terrible video editing stories that you've done. Yeah. Not just you specifically, and that sounded bad. I'm sorry. I meant terrible experiences that you or others 
in the video world, post-production field, have had. Oh, I'm sure there's a Tumblr for that, too. Probably. At I mean... Point, I believe that, you could pretty much take any three random words, and that is a Tumblr somewhere. Don't they have, like, Tumblr generators? They might. You can just... I mean, it's the internet, so why not, right? Sure. Where you're just like, I didn't want to start a Tumblr, but I don't know what I should start one about. Mm-hmm. Well, you put it in, and it just gives you a Tumblr generator. <laughs> Pandas. Swim. Carrots. Okay, we got a Tumblr. woo And That's it draws actually... in millions of other Tumblr users. Well, what, uh, do you have any comp plans for this uh, coming season? Well, um... Yes. We'll see how it goes. The two... Let's see. Well, the two... I can't think. Because Japan Comic-Con is May 4th, and I'm just saying, you know, you might not have to do any work, but it's going to be cool. Well, we'll have to talk. <laughs> I have to put it on my put it on my radar now. Uh, people have been um, uh, trying to get me to uh, come out to... Uh, what's the one that's coming up soon? I haven't even looked at the list. There's so many that are that are happening. Yeah. Well, I know this is it this weekend. Next weekend is um, HoneyCon AU, so the Australian con. And right now, as of recording this, is uh, Galicon. Uh, which one is in London right now? I can't remember. I have gone blank. <laughs> yeah, this is it's that time, right? Yeah. It's actually like the weekend now than when we're recording this so yep. it's like it's the mind has already gone beyond to you know mm-hmm. sort of like turning turning the IQ off and just kind of going into uh, autonomous mode yep yeah, um, the Friday nights coming home on the train you can almost hear hissing escaping my ears <laughs> okay guys we're good for 48 hours shut her down <laughs> then I get oh. home and Oh, what are we watching? Remodeling show. Great. How long is it? Three hours. Super. Yeah, I'm like that. I come home and I'm like, I want to do something like the most stupid and not have to think ever. So that's why Tumblr exists. Yep. (laughs) Uh, One of the ones that uh, I'd like to uh, try to make, it's going to be tight because it's right after... uh, uh, there's a thing I try to go to every year in Las Vegas um, called NAB for National Association of Broadcaster. It's kind of like CES or one of these cons, but except there's all like production and editing and it's like the big mecca there. Um, and then right after that is BAPSCON. Oh. Uh, I know a lot of uh, good people that are going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so... I'm going to see if I can't. It's basically like a few days after this thing. So I might see if I can extend my my time away and just sort of jump right into there. Yeah, I mean, that's not that far. I love California, drive. so. You could do that drive in a day, or you could fly. I don't know what you prefer, but I just miss driving so much, I would drive it in a heartbeat. I Listen, I drove all the way from New York to uh, uh, Canterlot Gardens. Nice. Um, uh, Ohio. It was like a ten-hour trip, but it was it was great. Left like super early in the morning. Mm-hmm. It was like little bits of fog on the road. It was like uh, the 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 scenery was uh, beautiful. Oh so yeah. It was that was a nice drive. I, My I, actual um, when I got the job that allowed me to come over to Japan, uh, the closest office they had was in Chicago. I lived in St. Louis, and the interview was at nine a.m. And I had to work the day before and the day after the interview. So I actually had to wake up at 2 a.m. Or actually wake up at midnight. Start driving at about 1 a.m. Got there about 8. Had my interview. And then drove back to St. Louis. Got about two or three hours of sleep. Woke up and went to work. So I understand. Wow. I understand what you're saying. And it gets harder to do stuff. I mean, just like bouncing back as you get older. You oh, know, yeah. you're just like, ah, you know, I'll just do this. I don't need much sleep. I'm just going to like, you know, crank it and, uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'll, I'll bounce back. And, uh, <laughs> I used to work harder the night and shift. harder. That's how I got through college. I, I didn't take out any loans or anything. I paid for it myself by working the night shift. But if you ask me to do that now, <laughs> um, no, don't think so. 
Um, the other one, uh, the other convention that, uh, you know, is starting to be up and coming and there's more, you know, really a lot of these conventions, you know, I appreciate what they're doing, but it's a big, it's a platform for getting together and, uh, sure. you know, visiting friends again too. Um, one of the ones I'm also going to see if I can't make it out to is, uh, uh, MLP Minnesota. Oh yes. That, uh, that's, uh, MLP MSP. It's all these names. I can't, uh, because there's so many cons, but yeah, uh, MLP MSP. I really appreciate, at first, I was kind of upset that Japan's PonyCon didn't have a more creative name. But at the same time, I'm like, well, it's easy to remember. You know where it is. You know what it's about. Okay, Mm -hmm. go with it. Japan PonyCon. Good enough. Yes. (laughs) So MLP, MSP, the Pony Convention in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Let me see if I can't make it out there, too. So. Uh, and there are others, you know, I just have to see the schedule and see how they go, uh, you know, because as a consultant, you know, it's not paid vacation. So if I'm not working, I'm not, uh, you know, making money. Yeah. And uh, but I, you know, I try not to look at it that way sure. uh, because you drive yourself crazy. Yeah. Um, so I just, you know, I look at it as mental uh, vacation time. And, uh, you know, I love traveling. I, I've done more traveling last year than, uh, you know, I've been five done years in a previous. long time. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, it's great. I'd like to do, I'd like to start kind of branching out again and doing more international traveling. Hey, let me know when you're coming to Osaka. I well, I, Japan has been, you. Japan has been one of the places I really wanted to visit. Ooh, we'll talk. <laughs> we should. Well, a question that I ask in each of my interviews, um, in all of My Little Pony, what would you say is the one line or one scene that defines you as a brony? Hmm. I have to think about that. Rather proud of that question. Of course, it's not really hard to stump me right now in my weakened condition. (laughs) (laughs) Granted, uh, vice versa. Yeah, you know. You would ask me my middle name right now. I'd be, uh, hold on a sec. My passport's right over here. Uh, well, let me turn this around because maybe okay. it'll get it'll get the juices flowing. What <laughs> is the line that defines you as a brony, would you say? I've, I've mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. No problem. I actually have two. Um, one is uh, the best night ever uh, when Fluttershy gets so excited to see all the creatures in the garden and rushes out and they all scatter in a surprise. And Fluttershy says to herself, Oh, Fluttershy, you're such a loud mouth. <laughs> I love than you. that she considers one of her... She considers herself to be loud, and no no creature would ever consider Fluttershy to be a loud mouth. But in her mind, yep, she's a loud mouth and needs to work on that. And uh, the other one is in uh, Luna Eclipsed, where... Uh, Luna has failed in trying to get everyone's attention without fear, and she storms off, and there's a quick one-second shot of Luna sitting in front of the statue of Nightmare Moon, pawing at the ground, uh, sadly. And that one kind of hit home for me. It's like, oh, yep, that's part of your past, and you're not going to be able to get past that, if you excuse the terrible pun. So you have to just... (laughs) Thank you. You have to try to do the best you can to get people to know you as you are now. So those are my two. Yeah. um, Most people choose more lighthearted ones. I just had more time to think on it than a bunch of others. Yeah, well, you caught, I mean, let's put it this way. You caught me off guard, but that's a really good question. So I'd have to think (laughs) about that. But I would probably say, given my nature, Mm -hmm. I'm a fun-loving person. Mm -hmm. I'm always, I tend to be sarcastic. Uh, you know, in a mystery science theater sort of a way. Okay. Okay, that's me, and I think a lot of people would agree if, you know, they get to know me, that's, I'm always, you know, I, I'm not on like that all the time, but that's that's my, that's what makes me laugh, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, so, I mean, I, I sort of draw, I guess there's parallels to uh, Pinkie Pie and a lot of the, the strange and wonderful things that she says. Um, that a lot of times do break the, the fourth wall. 
uh, I'm sure somewhere in there there's a line that I probably would would identify with. <laughs> but I'll have to find. I'll, I'll get back to you on the actual because you got me thinking now, which is a good thing. <laughs> Yay! Thought. Woo! I'm sorry. The machine should have been off for 48 hours. I apologize for the restarts. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to take my brain uh, about 48 hours to reboot. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to come back in 48 hours. Sorry. Tech support, my system's frozen up. I'm just thinking about one question over and over, and I just wanted to sleep. Yes, like 3 in the morning, I'm going to like sit up in bed and be like, ah, oh, that's the line. <laughs> but this will be like two years later. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just get a postcard out of the blue. It just right. has the line on there. Don't forget to write. What the? Huh? What's the? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. yep. How many other people you've asked that question to have just been kind Every of like every single one. Good. Then I don't. I don't feel so bad. <laughs> it was. Actually, it's. Yeah. It's a good question though, but it's a good takeaway. Because hmm. people, you know, sitting around, uh, you know, thinking about that. That's the, you know. Yeah. It's a good. Uh, you know, I, I would say, now that I think about it more, it's something, yeah, it's something, I'd probably be something from Pinkie Pie, or the 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 only person who really knows, like, what's really going on, like, when all the nonsense is, is, is uh, uh, Spike. Uh, yes. You think about it, he's always like, you know, this voice of reason where people are off, like, doing, you know, these, these convoluted plots that people, like, they're, they're, traveling off and trying to figure something out and he's like why are we doing this like why don't we just you know the voice of reason like you know yep. what the what the uh the, the mouthpiece for what the uh um the audience is thinking but yeah. you know nobody really you know like listens to him listens to him so they'll go off and learn the hard way right so a bit of sarcasm there no no i i can see it it's especially in lesson zero when he's the one who pops twilight's thought bubble Yep. Rolls mm-hmm. up the window shade so she stops worrying about it because she can't think about it if she can't see it. <laughs> yep. Okay, so we'll go with that. A pinky or spike moment. Yes. <laughs> very, very generic. Nice. Okay. Well, everybody, today we've been speaking with Standby or Standby Please, if you wish to be polite. Thank you so much for coming by today. No problem. Everybody, be sure to check out his uh, Twitter and Tumblr. Do you have a Tumblr? I don't have a Tumblr. <gasps> you can find me on Twitter, That's though. Okay. okay. <laughs> so Twitter. And uh, are you going to be uploading a huge amount of awesome drone videos? Yeah. Uh, stay stay tuned because there's there's a uh, there's a uh, show reel Ooh. coming. Okay. Cool. A lot of you know footage that I was able to shoot uh, last year and. Uh, you know, I'm always shooting more, so right. you know, keep your keep your eyes peeled. I'll let people know when I post. Nice. Okay. And again, <laughs> thanks for thanks for having me on your show. Yes, no problem at all. Everyone, this has been Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight on Everfree Network. We'll catch you next time.